Hey, it's Saturday morning. Uh, today, we're going to work on my 1996 GMC Suburban. Uh, it's got an oil leak. It's actually got probably more than one. But it's got one that's really uh, made it uh, unmanageable. And I've determined that it uh, looks like most of it anyway is coming from the uh, oil cooler adapter, which is uh, mounted on the uh, engine block where the oil filter would normally go on a small block 350. This is a, a Vortec 350. Um, but underneath all that fancy plastic is uh, pretty much a Chevy 350. So uh, let me uh, show you what I got going on. And I'm going to do this with the iPhone. So it's not going to be a real detailed uh, picture uh, video. You're not going to see every little thing I do. I'm going to need both my hands. But um, I'll give you as much information as I can, as, long as, as well as all the part numbers, uh, so that you could uh, do this yourself. These are, it's kind of a known problem. Uh, you go on the internet, you can find the information. Uh, the, you can get a kit uh, to reseal the uh, adapter. Um, I have that kit, uh, but I've also determined the hoses are leaking. So, I've decided that I'm just going to scrap it. I'm going to pull it all off. Uh, the oil cooler is a great idea, um, but uh, not worth the hassle. So I'm just going to get rid of it and keep the oil inside the engine. So this is here's the front differential, okay? Front drive line immediately above, right there. This guy right here. This is the adapter that we're going to change out. Um, and lighting's not that great. You can't see as much oil as I can. Um, but let's just say it's running off of here, causing problems. Um, when you do this, the new oil filter is going to point straight down like a Chevy 350 normally would. But you have to be, uh, you have to run a short filter to clear the drive line. This drive line doesn't move around. Um, it's fixed within the chassis. Um, if you have a... Uh, a lift kit on your truck, um, or maybe a two-wheel drive, I don't know, never owned a two-wheel drive. Um, if you've got a lift kit, you've got a little more room, and a uh, short filter may not be required. Uh, depending on the lift kit, a lot of the lift kits uh, lower the, uh, the attachment points for the differential and uh, give you a little more room. So you got the adapter, there's a couple hose fittings right there, and uh, I've tried to uh, take those apart without destroying them before and didn't have any luck. Um, these things are gonna have just about 30 seconds to come, come apart or cut them, break them, whatever. And then you can see up here maybe, these are the hoses, they go up to the radiator and uh, up near the top connection. It's not at the radiator, the hose itself is leaking up near the top. So um, with all these problems, I've just decided to eliminate all of this. So I've got the old parts off and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. These are the new pieces we're going to put on. Um, this is just an oil filter. Okay. Um, in this case it's a Wix and uh, part number 57099. The, uh, the adapter um, obviously got it from Summit Racing. There's a part number. Inside here should be a die cast, uh, I don't know, aluminum top metal piece. I got a bolt, another bolt. Should be using two hands. So this guy is going to bolt up uh, to the, well, bottom of the engine where the uh, stuff we previously tore off. Now, supposedly, a gasket is not required here, okay? The mounting surface for this adapter. The idea being if it leaks a little bit, um, it's just going through where the bypass would anyway. Uh, the bypass is there to uh, oh, allow excess oil to run back to the engine. It's not filtered oil if it's going through the bypass, but it's there to keep you from losing oil pressure if something happens to your filter. Um, 
some kit. Uh, these look like nice bolts. Uh, some of the other uh, parts, you could buy this. The part is available with 20 different brand names. In the past, I used the GM part number. Um, it worked. I got this one because, I don't know, I liked it. It was a couple bucks cheaper than the GM. But um, even though you're not supposed to need a gasket there, I'm going to use a really light bead of silicone on that surface to uh, to, to seal it, just because I'm weird like that. Now, using silicone in this uh, situation, you want to be extremely careful. You do not want that silicone going into your engine. And it's looking at here, I got a really small area right there. Um, I'm going to be very gentle with the silicone and I'm going to let it cure before I uh, fire this thing up. It's due for an oil change anyway, so before I'm done, I'm going to dump the oil and, and uh, do some other stuff so I'll have a chance to set up. The stuff I'm using sets up very quickly and I'm going to be very careful with it, especially in that area right around the bypass. So we'll mount that to the bottom of the engine. Um, now, I was able to extract these uh, lines probably not the way they're intended to be. Uh, I took it out as an assembly. I took the adapter, I took it off of the engine, uh, two bolts hold it on. It, uh, I took the bolts out and I still had to use a pry bar to get it off. It was stuck on there pretty good. Um, I took the hoses off at the radiator end and uh, took it out as an assembly and then for the purposes of the video, I wanted to take it apart. I didn't care, I'm throwing it away. Um, I did have to bend the hard lines a little bit to get it out in one assembly. But what happens here, inside, inside here where the hoses go in, there's a wire ring that retains it. So this little wire ring sits in a groove and to get it out, you got to get a pick underneath the, uh, the ends of it. Um, and that end is on the top side where you can't see it. So I gave it a little bit of an attempt. It didn't come out, so I just took it out as one piece. I'm pretty confident that that is not the way it's supposed to come apart. Most likely there's a, uh, a tool that would slide over the, uh, the tube and release that, uh, that snap ring or that wire ring. Um, I got a few things I could have tried. I've tried it in the past with no luck. Um, I think it depends on how much dirt and crap is in there. Um, these little plastic guys, they just slide over and retain the wire ring. It's kind of like a, a safety. Uh, so they snap on on this groove right here. So you got to pull the plastic piece back first. Then you can see that wire ring. You can peel it out of there. You can cut it off with a... I don't care. Cut it with whatever you want. You're going to make a mess. You're going to make a mess no matter what doing this. Um, but if you cut those lines when they're full of oil, you're going to wear most of it. So um, that's how that goes together. Um, they just, they're in a groove. You can see a little groove right there. The wire ring sits in that groove and catches on the uh, uh, bubble flare on the, on the line. I'm sure there's O-rings in there. Um, doo -doo -doo. Here's the kit that I had purchased for this and then decided not to use. Um, comes with a bunch of stuff. Oh, look, there's a gasket. I wonder if that does me some good. Um, it's a motor mite number. If you're uh, interested in trying to reseal your adapter and retain the oil cover, um, I'm not going to use it. So anyway, I'll show you what's underneath here. So. I think the hardest part of this whole operation was digging the gasket out of there. The gasket was extremely hard and stuck on there pretty good. So all we've got is a sealing surface for the oil filter, which is the uh, larger diameter there. Um, and then the adapter mounts to those two bolt holes and uh, we just screw it all back together. So I'll put that together and uh, move on with my project. Um, another thing, the uh, connections for the uh, cooler itself 
on the driver's side of the radiator. You can't see in there. Um, I was able to get them out without too much stress. However, if, uh, if it's not cooperating, you may have to take the fan shroud off to give yourself a little room. Uh, this had been apart before. I put a radiator in it last year and uh, came apart pretty easy. So, uh, like I said, if, it, if you're having trouble getting in there, I think if you pull the radiator shroud out, which is not too bad uh, to do, you'd have a little more room to work. So, that's what it looks like when it's installed. Okay, you can see just a little bit of silicone spooged out of there. And I did determine that those bolts are ARP bolts, which is a, a high quality bolt. Some of the other kits, there was complaints about the quality of the bolts. So, now all I gotta do is spin a filter on it and uh, change the oil. So, I've uh, filled it up with oil and ran it and I have no, uh, no major leaks. In other words, I didn't uh, screw something up here. Another thing I'm doing, these are the uh, ends off of the original uh, cooler lines that go into the radiator. I, uh, I cut them off and uh, just plugged the holes with silicone and uh, I'll be threading those into the radiator tank. Uh, not that I think it's gonna leak or anything like that. I just wanna keep crap out of the, uh, out of the holes. Um, I had the option when I bought the radiator, I believe the radiator without the oil cooler in it was actually more money. And at that time, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do on this. So uh, I'm just gonna plug the holes with the, uh, with the old lines. I could have cut them a little shorter actually, but it'll, uh, it'll work. And that's just to keep mud and crap out of the, out of the radiator tank. It's really kind of optional. It wouldn't hurt anything if it did. So, other than that, uh, it's been a successful project. I'm gonna steam it off now and um, make sure, well, I'm gonna see what other leaks I've got. I, it was kind of pointless to, uh, to worry about it with this adapter leaking as bad as it was. So, I'm gonna steam it off and uh, drive it for a couple days and see what it does. And I'm sure there will be others to fix.